All right, I, uh, the title of my project was The Pythagoras Was a Baseball Fan. And uh, I've got my problems I worked out and all this stuff, all the data, this, uh, I'll pass it around, you can go through it. Um, as you know, Pythagoras was cre uh, known for creating the Pythagorean Theorem, which is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Uh, Bill James is a noted baseball statistician who works for the Boston Red Sox now. He, uh, he used the idea of sum of squares to, use, to make a formula that would predict the winning percentage of uh, a baseball team using their runs scored and runs allowed. Um, you can see at the bottom there, the formula is uh, runs scored squared divided by the runs scored squared plus runs allowed squared. Um, just some proof that it works. Uh, the 2010 Yankees uh, scored a total of 859 runs and allowed 693. Uh, at the end of the season, their actual record was 95 and 67. So uh, under that, it's got the formula worked out. You can see where uh, their winning percentage should have been 60.5%. And with that, their record should have been 98 and 64. So what I did was uh, I, I started looking at changing the exponent. And I found that if you use 1.85 as the exponent, it gets you a little bit closer to the actual results. And uh, you can see where I plug that into, uh, I used the Yankees run scored, and I plugged it in and got their winning percentage should have been 59%, which is the exact same as their actual record was last year. Um, so what I did, uh, I first wanted to use uh, this season, but they haven't played enough games to get uh, accurate data. And I wanted to predict how they would end uh, at the end of this year, but I ended up, I went back and looked at the stats from the first 50 games last year, and I predicted how the season should have turned out, and I then compared it to how it actually did turn out. And uh, <coughs> um, since I'm only using the first 50 games of this season, I, um, there should be some substantial differences, because just because of teams turning their season around, and you never know with injuries and trades and stuff like that, what's going to happen. So. Um, First, we'll look at the American League East and how they, this is their actual uh, standings from last year. Um, the star uh, next to the team means that they made the playoffs um, and the Yankees won the division. I'm sorry, the Rays won the division. Um, with their predicted standings, you see that the <coughs> Tampa Bay Rays uh, record should have been, they should have won 14 more games uh, according to their uh, stats in the first 50 games. And the Yankees, uh, they were plus eight. They, uh, no changes made in the playoff teams. They still both made the playoffs. And uh, the bottom three teams relatively stayed the same. Uh, you see the Blue Jays should have been better. And what it means with if they're uh, either plus or minus a lot, it has to do with how many games that they either get blown out or they blow somebody out. So if there's a big, uh, say, say they lose a game 18 to one, it's, it could take place of losing three or four games. Um, the American League Central, the Twins won it. Uh, you can see their record was 94 and 68. And uh, they are uh, predicted, you know, they were predicted to win it again. You can see that the Tigers, they actually, they played their stand that, to the standard. I mean, they didn't, uh, the predicted standings uh, was right on the money with where they actually finished. Uh, in the West, the Rangers won. They were 97 and 62. And, uh, made the playoffs, oh. and the predicted standings, they all stayed the same, except they should have been worse than they actually were, um, according to the formula. Uh, if we move to the National League, uh, the Phillies won the division, and after uh, running the numbers and uh, predicting the outcome, the Braves actually should have won the division. The Phillies still would have made the playoffs, but they were uh, a couple of games back from the Braves. And in the Central, this is where it starts to get uh, pretty crazy because the Reds won it, but according to the uh, formula, the Cardinals should have won it. And uh, you can look down here and see the Astros and the Pirates. They, uh, those, are, those would have been two of the worst records in the history of the game. So I mean, they, they got off to a really bad start last year, and they ended up turning things around pretty good. Um, in the West, uh, I've got two stars by the Giants because they actually won the World Series last year. And uh, they won the West Division. And you can see here that they actually wouldn't have even made the playoffs according to their 
where uh, the way it started the season last year, and the Padres and the Rockies were to make the playoffs. Um, so after uh, after looking at these uh, predictions, you can see some big changes with uh, in some of the divisions, and then there's some where you don't see any any at all. The uh, the American League was mostly similar. I don't think any of the playoff teams shuffled at all. Um, and like I said, the Giants, they, I mean, they won the series last year, and they wouldn't even make the playoffs, according to their uh, to the way they started the year. Um, the Reds were another team that wouldn't have made the playoffs. Um, the Astros and the Pirates, they were uh, their predicted records were far worse than their actual records. Uh, like I said earlier, it was mostly all <coughs> about allowing a lot of runs in the games that they've lost. Like, like I said, losing. Uh, losing a blowout can uh, drastically change how the, this, uh, the formula will predict your standings. Um, big changes uh, in the outcomes, they come from uh, a lot of teams, make, they make a lot of mid-season changes to uh, try to help their team. And you know, some, a lot of players uh, go down with injuries and I mean, it can, it, uh, it can really affect a lot the way you start the first 50 games of the year. And, uh, some uh, people have used this formula just to to give uh, the coaches and the managers an opportunity to see how their player, uh, how their team will fare for the rest of the year. They, uh, if they're started, if they're predicted, you know, to to be one of the bottom teams in the division, it means that they meet, they need to make uh, to make some changes in order to uh, maybe turn around their year. Um, and although this is a not not a good indicator of how the season will turn out. In, uh, but it does give you an idea. It's not saying that it will turn out like that because you can. There have been uh, big changes in uh, in teams over the course of the year, but it does give you uh, a good idea of how your team will fare if they stay the same, uh, if they play the same the rest of the year. And that's it. Is there any questions? Um, you know, in sports and stuff, it's always a big thing trying to predict who's going to be the winner or whatever. So, if I was to place a bet on a team, could I use this formula and then come pretty close? Well, I mean, like, what are you saying, like, to the, at the beginning of the year? Or uh, like, let's say towards the middle part. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a good indicator because, like, like I showed in, I mean, which slide was it? This one right here, I mean, if you, this is the formula that they use, and they use the, uh, I mean, they square both all the numbers, and I mean, it gives you. They were four games, uh, three games above where they should have been. I mean, where they actually finished. I mean, it's a it's a good indicator, but it it needs to be later on in the year. If you start early, because I started looking at this year, and one of the things I looked at was the Braves, and they were predicted to finish last in the division because they started off like you know below 500 on the first 15 games of the year. So that wouldn't have been. It would have been some uh, really different numbers there. 